Hello, Uta here with my first big <laughs> bouquet. <laughs> it's a big mixed inclusive bouquet. You'll notice the dianthus and the peony and the roses and the sweet williams. There you are. I'm going to try to keep it at least partly in the frame. <laughs> now, uh, I had a very interesting chat with the man who services my septic tank. <laughs> it was so interesting. He was complaining that at his traditional church, there are men coming in, dressing up as women, and he is complaining that they want to be the center of attention. And I said, oh my goodness, I have to give you a copy of my memoir. And he took it. He was so happy. I have very few review copies left. And uh, please do contact me with an address. If you have an address of someone who could write a review or... Uh, is uh, the kind of journalist who would actually read it, that type of thing. I've already sent it to the New York Times. They neglected to do a review in the New York Times, the New York Times review of books of In the Curated Woods, True Tales from a Grass Widow by Uta Hagen, published at iUniverse. Uh, so uh, do contact me through my WordPress blog contact form, which is utahagengrasswidow.wordpress.com. Um, and let me know if you happen to know uh, of an address of an appropriate news company, even if it's a local one, as long as it's in the continental U.S., I'm happy to send them a copy. I'm about to send a copy uh, to a new trans widow and she and I are negotiating about what her pen name will be. Uh, she would prefer to be able to speak under her own name and actually she uh, had a restrictive stipulation uh, inserted against her will in the divorce. Very strange, restricting her freedom of speech. Uh, and meanwhile, her ex-husband is out there on all the social media platforms uh, saying all things, all kind of things about himself. So speaking of guys like that, <clears throat> um, this is uh, the main topic of this short video. Um, it is the uh, movement tells of the uh, men who are ideating and cross-dressing and they're doing um, small small gestures which we could as women interpret as microaggressions because they are co-opting our sex <laughs> they are co-opting our sex category and um, I think that as a trained dancer and a trained uh, special education uh, person, I was going to say expert, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I am an early childhood specialist as a special education specialist also. I can say that I have, I have uh, really learned the uh, process of observing behavior and movement. And I saw uh, someone recently, a young guy, who was wearing falsies and a white t-shirt and black pants. <laughs> and just the way he had his pants hitched up and his white t-shirt tucked in there and the movements that he was doing while he waited to cross the street were his tell. And number one, there's something about glancing from side to side and slightly moving your head so that you're augmenting your peripheral vision. But uh, Nettie would like to pretend that he was doing that out of self-protection to know if somebody was going to come and club him on the head or something, which they never did. Um, instead, they gave him promotions and made him the chief operating officer of his tech company. Um, so it's there's this uh, sideways glances type, uh, uh, just small movements 
that are accompanied with pretend looseness of the joints. And that's really, I think, my uh, perhaps groundbreaking uh, observations here is that uh, women naturally are much more flexible in their joints than men. And that is because of reproduction and giving birth. Um, and I remember specifically, for example, uh, in the last two weeks or so of my, my pregnancies, which were regular term pregnancies, uh, I became really loose. There's one of those hormones that just starts making you loose in preparation of going into labor. And women actually have more shoulder injuries and more knee injuries and uh, that type of thing because we have a natural looseness in our joints that men do not have. And along with the fact that we have less fast twitch muscles from a genetic standpoint than men, and men have more fast twitch genetic muscle, <laughs> fast twitch muscles genetically, and uh, just the way their shoulder and hip girdles structurally in the skeleton are built, they just do not have the same flexibility as women. Now, there might be some gymnasts and there might be some uh, yogi who is uh, a male and is very, very flexible. And of course, that is that uh, just outside of the norm uh, upper end of the bell curve. Um, and it is just noticeable that these men, along with sort of this side to side glancing about, they do this slight uh, shimmy. And they'll, I'm not going to stand up and demonstrate it with my hips, but they will also sort of move their hips around and you will uh, especially notice it in that um, memorable, notorious bathtub, bubble bath scene of uh, Bob Dylan Mulvaney. Now I have to thank uh, a YouTuber for the Bob Dylan Mulvaney phrase and now I can't think of who he was. Uh, normally it's something like behind the line. Um, <laughs> he's pretty hilarious and uh, I think to avoid uh, any accusations of nonsense, he's decided to name that person from that famous lavender two-piece bathing suit bubble bath scene, <laughs> Bob Dylan Mulvaney. And I like that because I always regarded Bob Dylan as a little bit of a charlatan because <laughs> he was from Minnesota and his name wasn't Bob Dylan to start out with. Anyway, <laughs> um, I also felt that... Um, there were other people in that folk rock scene back then who could sing on key, <laughs> which Bob Dylan made a point of singing off key. So I thought Bob Dylan Mulvaney makes a lot of sense for that particular person who uh, is trying to engage in a clever mimicry of women. And in that bubble bath scene, he was doing all sorts of little turning his head and and, you know, doing this little thing, like you can tell that I'm not just, sh you know, this is a side to side shimmy, but there's like this little up and down shimmy. And then, you know, in your hips, you sort of are putting that side hip and shoulder closer together. So this, there's this little, you know, but it's, it's, I'm, I'm making it um, overt now, but they, they do this little, you know, uh, movement thing. And it's a tell. You know that you could examine this person who is doing that and notice what his shoulder to hip ratio is and notice how big his hands are and how big his feet are and uh, where his eyes are within his whole facial structure and so on. And it's likely that, uh, yes, you can tell he is a tell that he is a man, even though he thinks he passes because he's carrying something on his front uh, that is mimicking women's natural breasts. Uh, so that, uh, oh yes, and a little bit of an update. We're so close 
to 1,100 subscribers. We're already above 79,000 views on my channel since the beginning. And thank you everyone. And please do watch my uh, wellness movements playlist because we are all under so much stress and we need to de-stress and we need to demonstrate to those, especially those of us who are women, we need to demonstrate strength in our femaleness and strength dealing with stress and trauma within ourselves and have that core of inner strength. Um, and so I believe my wellness moves with all this new tapping and things like that that I've added are, uh, you know, that is, that is useful. It's going to help you. And I have two YouTube uh, channels that I've been using for pressure point uh, sort of chiropractic uh, uh, advice. Uh, for pressure points that relieve stress, it's helping some of the pain in my feet because I do have chronic moderate pain in my feet and uh, it's helping, you know, I have arthritis in my hands and and there are things with certain uh, pressure points and so on and th amazing thing with uh, the thumb. Okay, so that is doctor, like D-R period, cherry, like the fruit, uh, very nice uh, physical therapist. Uh, and also a chiropractor, uh, uh, motivational doc, motivational, and then all one word, D-O-C, uh, Dr. Alan Mandel. I find it very encouraging to uh, try out these these uh, pressure point things and uh, it's, it's kind of amazing. They do have real anatomical connections. I'm not saying that it's like a religion or that it's a cure-all, but it does help you to focus um, uh, on something else besides wherever it is that stress is manifesting in your body, if nothing else. I think it might also do something there with the mind-brain connection. And I... I posit that with my kind of wellness moves, Feldenkrais physical therapy, uh, chiropractic type acupressure points, and quality talk therapy, psychoanalysis for trauma and childhood uh, abuse history and things like that, that could, I pose, help someone who is like Nettie, who is experiencing a disconnect between their mind and body. I don't even want to call it gender dysphoria because gender isn't a real word. Uh, so that's about it. And uh, I am doing well. I want you to know that uh, the smoke has the smoke condition that we had from the Canadian fires is mostly dissipating. When I go outside still for the next day or so until it rains, I'm going to be wearing an N95 mask because those smoke particles are very small and they can get into your bloodstream through your lungs. So enjoy the outside. Be well. And thank you.